Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to start on a different page. I think it would be a good idea to do, let's do user settings and profiles first. And then after that, we could go ahead and do articles. So we're going to want to add a new um, state configuration. And I think I'm going to make a new file called profile.ts where we're going to create the configuration for state and actions of the profiles. The boilerplate here is going to include both the state and actions. We don't need to include effects because that's going to be imported into the top level. And then we're going to want to import the profile configuration in the index file of overmind state. We're also going to want to import a couple of functions in from overmind config. And this is going to help us combine all of our state together. The two functions that we're going to bring in is going to be merge and namespace. And we're going to be using them like this, where the top level is going to have all of our states, actions, and effects that we want throughout the application. For us, it will just be the effects of the API. And then namespace is going to take the states, actions, and effects and combine them in a way that they're separated so we could use the same names when we, when we want to, when we need to, I mean. Um, and it's going to be separated by, right now it's auth and profile. And later on, we're going to add more, such as articles. After we do that, we have to also update our auth file because all the state now lives inside of a sub-object called auth. So all we have to do is just add auth to all of these um, properties. And also be sure to update the actions as they also come from the sub-property of auth. And these other files are going to be in the app file, auth form, header, auth, and, oh yeah, not there, not in the index file, but the other component files. And as a sample of the components, um, you could do some destructuring renaming, like so, or you could just destructure normally, like this. And after that bit of refactoring, your, your state should look like this, and it's just better organized, so everything that has to do with auth is now inside of auth, and profile will now live inside this. And you can also test your application and make sure everything looks right and correct. And now we're gonna go back to the profile file and fill this out. The first function that we're gonna create is update current user. It doesn't require any state, so we haven't defined any of that yet, but it's gonna take in the value of user DTO and we're just gonna send it to the API to update the user. So we're gonna make a request to update user and we're sending in the value inside of an object with the property of user. After we send the request, we're going to set the current user to the response and save. You'll notice that we're using the auth state and to set the current user. This is because we don't want to duplicate data, so there's only going to be one single source of truth, basically. And that's one of the benefits of Overmind. We can namespace these states, but we're allowed to interact with one another a bit. So inside of profile, we're going to be interacting with auth. And then of course, we're going to wrap it in a try catch block. I don't know what to do with these errors quite yet. Um, right now, I'm just going to log it out. I'm deciding whether or not to store this into state. So we'll come back to this. So I think that's all the state that we need to start the settings page. So let's create that page now. All right, let's create this thing. All right, so this is going to be the normal boilerplate for the settings page. And I think we're also going to want to get the update current user action. So after we add the bootstrap skeleton thing uh, for the page header, we're going to add it to our current routes. So in app here and import the settings component and make sure that we're going to the path of slash settings. And in your browser, um, settings should work now. and I think we don't have to update the page links because it's already going to slash settings, so that's a little helpful. 
I think underneath the header, uh, we could add a button for logging out. All right, and the class name for this button is going to be BTN BTN Outline Danger, and then we're going to give it on click of our logout action, which we need to also add from our actions here, which comes from auth logout, and we just pass it in like so. Next, we're going to create our update user form, and that means we're going to import a couple of things from Formic. And I don't think we need to make a new component. Uh, we can just add it in here since it shouldn't be too large. So I'm going to add it right above the HR. So we'll, we'll have Formic and then Form, and then inside we'll have each of the fields. What are the fields again? All right, let me just scroll up a little bit. But these are all, all the fields that we're creating. Um, each of them are text inputs, except for this one right here, which is a text area. So Formic has a prop called as, which will change the underlying uh, HTML element uh, from the default of an input type to uh, something else like a text area. All, by the way, all of this information is taken from the front end instructions. It's down here somewhere under settings. So basically just um, reusing this HTML and translating it to JSX. So we're not quite done yet. Uh, if we do a save, uh, the format prop is still going to be uh, angry at us because we need to add uh, the two properties of on submit as well as initial values. And then all of these fields, we need to add a name property uh, specifying which uh, object property that it's looking at. So let's add that now. All right, the way we're going to fill in this format component is going to be very similar to the auth form. If you take a look at this for reference, initial value is going to be the object of the current user that we're going to be using. And then on submit is going to take the action from overmind. So let's do that. So on submit is going to take update current user. And initial values, we're going to take the current user from state. So I'm going to do another destructure here. And we're going to destructure current user from auth from state. And I think it's going to be safe to pass it in as a complete thing here. Or not. Oh, OK, there's too many partials. Um, that's fine. We're going to construct the, the initial values in here then. So const initial values equals. All right, so I want the bio, email, image, and username. And then I'm going to populate initial values with all the fields from current user. Uh, we're going to be using the optional chaining uh, because all of these fields are they're optional. They may not be there. Uh, sometimes it may be null, and sometimes it may be undefined. So this is a way to uh, add it in safely. And obviously change this to initial values so that we're using it. Um, okay, so when it is undefined, we should explicitly set these to empty string. So I'll do an or here. And then once that's done, let's make sure that we add the name to each of the fields. Uh, this one's image, username bio, email, and password. And after we save that, everything should be good to go. Um, let's open up Overmind and then see this. I'm going to make sure that we open up our actions here. And then let's add some stuff. All right, let me get around my face. And the first thing you'll notice that there, these fields are not being populated by our state. And to fix that, we need to go back to our settings. And we need to add a prop called re-enable or enable reinitialize. Re and now the formic state is being used correctly. And if we go into our overmind, uh, let's test our actions. I don't really have a picture to use, but let's set the bio. And let's just set password to password again. And click update settings. And now a new action has been fired, Cur update current user. We can check out our state, which is over here. And now our bio has been updated. Image is also now a string instead of null, which is totally fine. Let's go back to our actions. And let's test out our other action that we added, which is click here to log out. And now the current user is null. And we're still on the settings page, uh, which will present us a problem. So I want to make sure that we do a redirect to get rid of the settings page. 
So let's go back to our settings component and we're going to add the redirect just like we did with the auth page. Let's make sure to import all of this. So the redirect from reach router and authenticated and authenticating are from state. So we're going to add it from auth here. And once we save, we should be able, or the app should just redirect us back to home. We're not, let's, oh, uh, if we're not authenticated, we need to redirect. So I'm going to get rid of that and add a exclamation point here. And that works. Okay, I'm going to sign back in now. And I'm going to change one thing in settings. Uh, this bottom uh, log out button, I kind of hate the way it looks. So I'm going to update it a little bit. What the fuck? So I found a small bug that we have in our app. And that comes from the auth state. Uh, I ch I'm changing the default state of authenticating to true. Uh, because in settings, it when the app starts, so on reload, uh, it's going to trigger this because authenticating is false. Or no, is it true? No, yeah, it's, it's false. So this will always trigger even before the current user has been loaded. So I'm just going to set this so then we don't have to worry about that during development. Okay, so this is using Bootstrap 3, so I don't get the spacing utility, so I can't just add margin and then a number. So I think I'm just going to do btm block here, and I'm also going to do the same thing here. Change this to btm block, which I think looks a little better. I still want spacing between those two buttons, so... Um, I'm just going to add a style, margin top of 0.5 rem, just because that looks much better, in my opinion. Okay, I can move this out of the way now, and open this up, and there's one thing that I want to do, which is to disable this button, and do a little bit of form validation for this password, because I... I don't want them to submit the update user without submitting the password as well. To do that, I'm going to be importing from, yep, and we're going to create a validation schema. And this will be the object for the validation schema. Um, all of these properties are strings, but they're optional, so it doesn't really matter all that much. The important part here is password is required. And then we're going to feed this object into Formic over here. Validation schema, settings, validation schema. Now I'm going to wrap everything inside of the format component in parens, as well as brackets, because we're going to be creating a pseudo component inside here. This way we'll have access to all the props that Formic uses under the hood. And the one that I want to use is is valid. Well, I haven't been shown my face. Okay, here we go. And I've added is valid to the button and making sure that it the button's disabled whenever the form is not valid. And to see that in action, you could go in here. The button's grayed out right now because uh, it's not valid. And no matter what we add to all of these fields, it's not going to allow us to submit until we fill out the password. And that's what we want. Okay, this has become a lot larger than I expected, so I'm going to move everything inside of the Formic component as well as all of this logic into its own component. Alright, so after that bit of refactoring, the settings form is just going to be this little JSX element here. And everything that we've done is now in here. Uh, everything that's formic and yep related are in here. Uh, the destructuring of use over mine is a lot simpler. I think we could also get rid of props here since we're not really getting anything special from the outside. So this can be route component props. And I get rid of this. So that's the settings page and the settings form. So now that that's done, let's, we can move back to our profile and start working on the state there and then create our profile pages after. Okay, so we're going to need to add a couple of properties to state. And a good first property to add is loading since we're going to do some asynchronous actions and send HTTP requests. 
Next, I think it would be a good idea to make a lookup table or a hash map uh, where the key is going to be the username and then the value is going to be the profile. And of course, we're going to initialize it as an empty object. With our state created, we can start working on the get user action. So the get user action is going to take in a string as the value, and that's going to be the username. Since we're going to take that, we're going to get the username from the route parameter. With the value that comes back, we're going to set it into the state under users there. And then be sure to add loading and loading to and set it to true and false so that the R app knows to wait. And then finally, wrap it in a try catch block so that when we get an error back, we'll do something with it. Still don't know what to do with it yet, so I'm just going to log it out. And then for get user to work, we need to add it to the export of actions. So I think that's all we need to do inside of the state file. So let's create the profiles page. Profile.tsx. Make sure to add a simple boilerplate for the profile component. And then finally add it to the app file. And we're going to make sure that the path is going to be a param path. So it's going to be colon slash or colon username after the slash. I'm actually going to move it at the very bottom. And because this is a catch all and it'll never get to this temp component, we can finally get rid of it. Or actually, instead of getting rid of it, I'm just going to move it to the top and just change this to a uh, slash. And that'll be our homepage for now. And right now, it's just going to say profile works because we haven't really added anything. And that's what we're going to do now. So in the profile page component, we have access to the username, but it's going to be on the side of props and the route component props, because it's in TypeScript, isn't smart enough to understand to add it to the props. So we're going to make an interface here of props. And the property inside of props is going to be username, which is of string. And then we can destructure username from the props in the component like this. And since we have to access our state management, we're going to be using the use overmind hook. The only action that we're going to need is from profiles, and it's going to be get user. From state, we're going to need both current user and also the hash map of all the users. Okay, so I was reading some documentation about TypeScript and Reach, and it seems that um, route component props takes in a generic that you could add the params to. We could use this instead of an interface, and this will make the app component profile to be TypeScript compliant. We're going to have to add some logic to determine the correct user for this page. But for now, we're going to set user to current user as a placeholder and then fill out the HTML so that we can test that out. That's the bootstrap skeleton. And that's going to be the container for all of our user information. And then we're going to check if the user image exists. If it does, we'll render an image. And then we'll add the username and bio. And this is what it looks like so far. Uh, right now there's no image, so we're not going to render it. This page still needs some work, but it's enough for us to get started. And let's do the logic. So we're going to add a use effect hook here. Inside the dependency array, we're going to just do username because we want to run this effect only when the username changes and no other time. Inside the callback function, we're going to call get user. But we're only going to call get user if it's not the current user and this specific user isn't already in our cache. And the condition is going to look like this. And setting the user here is going to also be based on the username. And I put it inside an if block just because it's a little complicated since um, username from props can be undefined. So it'll look like this. And then finally, to represent the loading state, we could wrap all of this in a ternary returning an h4 of loading, or the fragment of what we set up. And loading here is going to come from state.profiles.loading. All right, so this is what it looks like so far. Um, so this is f or f username, which is what we're logged in as. And then there's also username, which is this guy. Um, so it's pretty bare bones right now. Uh, the rest of the page is going to require us to implement feeds, which is articles. So I'm going to do that in another video. And um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. And I'll see you guys next time.